Hey, yo, good evening, viewers of the tube. My name is Tyler, and I'd like to give you a warm welcome to the channel that some people label as negative and controversial. The channel that has made its fair share of enemies. The channel that doesn't give a flying frig because those people can't handle the truth. It's time for Chico Crypto. One year and two months to go, May 23rd, 2020. When you hear that date, does it mean anything to you? Well, if you are a crypto enthusiast, you should have that date marked down in your calendar. Why? Roughly every four years, a major event takes place with Bitcoin, which has only happened twice in its history. I'm talking about the Bitcoin halvening, when the network reduces the reward by 50%. This event is not getting the attention it deserves, and I really think the importance is getting downplayed, which is kind of understandable because a large majority of people in the industry have only been involved in the space for a couple of years and never experienced the time before one and only the time after one. Let's examine what has happened with Bitcoin, the industry, and the price of Bitcoin with the two previous happening events. The first one took place on November 28th, 2012. And in the Bitcoin history books, it's called Havening Day 2012. Like I said, the reward of Bitcoin gets cut in half about every four years. But more specifically, it is every 210,000 blocks. The rewards during this time was 50 Bitcoin per block, but on November 28th, this would be cut in half to 25 Bitcoin per block. As we can see from this chart, Bitcoin had a couple bubbles and then one epic crash. The dot is the inflection point when Bitcoin got to its lowest point about a year before the first happening event and the price rose all the way up to the date of the event. Now, what happened after the first event? Well, the rewards were slashed in half. Scarcity of Bitcoin became a real worry. And quickly after the reward drop, the price of Bitcoin boomed, going from about $10 to over 200. And then a crash down. And then an epic bull market of 2013 happened. Bitcoin got to nearly $1,200 before another epic crash down. Then just like before, the price hit an inflection point about a year before the next happening. Then the price started to slowly climb up to the date of the next event, which occurred on July 9th, 2016. Bitcoin's reward got slashed from 25 Bitcoin per block to just 12.5 Bitcoin per block, increasing scarcity and slashing minor rewards for the second time. This one was a bit different than the one before. People were expecting a quick price boom, but it wasn't nearly as drastic and took some more time. But eventually the price still went crazy, leading up to the last parabolic bull run when Bitcoin reached nearly 20,000 per coin. Then, just like clockwork, again the price crumbled after that intense run and has been coming down ever since. Now we are a measly two months away from the one year point before the next happening event. And based on previous history, is this the inflection point? Will history repeat itself? And will the price begin moving up in anticipation of the date? Well, this time the reward is getting cut in half again from 12.5 Bitcoin per block to 6.25 Bitcoin per block. This means only 900 Bitcoins will be mined per day compared with the previous 1800. 85% of all Bitcoins will be officially mined and released into the wild. Also, I have mentioned this before, that this cut in half is more special than the ones before because the annual inflation rate of Bitcoin is dropping from 3.8% to just 1.80%, which is below the central bank's target rate of 2%. This will be the first time in the history of Bitcoin that the inflation will be lower than that of fiat's inflation by the central banks across the globe. There is the argument though that with the rewards being cut in half, miners would be impacted because their profits go down and those miners will drop out because of this. Well, that doesn't seem to be the case based on the past. Looking at the hash rate after the first event in November of 2012, the hash rate had a slight dip, but it held. 
Extending out the hash rate chart to the next happening event in July of 2016, the hash rate exploded again and a slight dip right after. Let's now extend the chart out to the hash rate today. Hash rate continued to climb after July 2016 and is exponentially larger today. A slight drop in the hash rate after the 2017 bull run, but as you can see from the charts, as time goes on, the hash rate just keeps climbing and the little drops in hashing power become invisible to the naked eye and not even noticeable on the charts. My personal opinion, miners are not going anywhere. It is still profitable to mine Bitcoin in many parts of the world and renewable energy mining is on the rise. Hash rate is going to keep climbing in anticipation of this event. And we may see a slight drop after May 2020, but just like before, it won't matter in the long run. Why? Because continued and increased demand for Bitcoins will stay constant, which like before, forces the price higher once fewer Bitcoins are being generated on a day-to-day -day basis. Once the price starts rising in anticipation of the halvening, and in my opinion it will, public interest is going to come flooding into Bitcoin like never before. Your mom, dad, brother, sister, friends are all going to be interested once again because everyone heard about it last bull run, but only a few took the dive into it and invested. And now that it is on their mind, the next price rise is going to lead to a large percentage of them investing. A way bigger percentage this time around, I can guarantee you that. Last time there wasn't easy on-ramps for them to start investing. The most user-friendly application was Coinbase, but people didn't know Coinbase as a household name, so a majority of them didn't trust it. This time around you will have Coinbase, which they learned they can trust, but already household names like Fidelity, eToro, Robinhood. I was at the gym the other day and one of the people asked me what my job was. I told them a crypto YouTuber and they were like, no way, what should I buy? I asked them what service they use, and they said Robinhood. This was when I realized that these mainstream apps are going to lead to the next wave of investments, and come next price boom, the majority will be invested in some form or another. Cheers, viewers. I'll see you next time.